Hello fun guys, I wanted to give a quick update on these mushroom buckets. So we filled bucket C with the myceliated straw on July 2nd. Today is August 5th, so just shortly over a month and we're ready to get our first harvest. Bucket B here is ready for its second harvest and I could maybe let it go another day, but I'm just going to go ahead and harvest it. I don't want it to uh, get too past its prime. And what I mean by past its prime is when the mushroom cap starts to, when it's growing, it starts to kind of unveil itself like that. And you want to harvest it before the, the tips start to go the other way, so to speak. So we're going to harvest these mushrooms today and dry them out until they're cracker dry. Dehydrating the mushrooms at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. The mushrooms are done dehydrating when they snap in half and are crumbly. I've been researching the past couple days on how to do a proper hot water extraction to break down the chitin to make the beta glucans or the, or the, uh, the pluran polysaccharide bioavailable in this powder. Now I've watched big manufacturers do it and how I understand is they put it into this big container and they uh, boil it or simmer it at a certain temperature until the beta-glucans get released into the liquid. Well, that liquid then uh, gets drained into this other chamber that's called a spray dryer. Now, those are big and commercialized, and I'm not exactly even sure how the spray dryers work, but the liquid kind of gets sprayed in there at such a high temperature, and the evaporation causes the water to melt, leaving only the powder and the beta-glucans, which fall out of the bottom. Now I guess when it's getting heated, that evaporation or something creates a barrier that protects the beta-glucan from getting damaged. I don't know, but that's way commercialized. We're gonna do a home-based hot water extraction. So I'll be using a crock pot for this long decoction today. All right, so first we'll be adding the 23.8 grams into this crock pot. Add enough water to cover it and a little bit extra for, to make up for the uh, evaporation. So I'm just gonna start with one cup of water just for measuring purposes so we know where we begin at. Not a bad starting spot, but I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for two cups. Two cups of water. This isn't tap water either because I know you don't want any ad additional chemicals such as chlorine or whatever to be absorbed by the mushroom, so this is treated water. Then I'm just gonna stir it up, make sure all the material is submerged, and we're gonna put this on low. I'm gonna come back about every 30, about every half hour to an hour, stir it, make sure it's not fully evaporated, that way we won't be burning the good stuff on the bottom, and we'll start with that. It has now been three hours, and I'm gonna leave the lid off just to help the extra water evaporate out. Now, I have no idea why this is happening, but maybe someone watching can maybe explain. But look at all these little like honeycomb patterns. I have no idea why it's forming like that. It's really interesting to me. That's how this powdery concoction is forming when it settles. Okay guys, it's been about six hours actually, and I think I added a little bit too much water, which is why it took so long. I needed to evaporate more of it out. Um, but now we see it's a little bit of a thicker sludge-ish consistency, which I think is perfect. So next, we're gonna add some ground flaxseed soak up the rest of the, the water with that. So once you've added enough flaxseed flour to soak up all the excess water, 
my dehydrator came with this little tray and we're just going to scoop the goop and spread it across out on there and we're gonna re-dehydrate all the extra water that's remaining in this. Spread the goop evenly across this dish. That'll maximize the surface area for it to dehydrate quicker. And I will probably end up checking this every hour, hour and a half and break it apart once the moisture evaporates more. And now we continue to dehydrate until the water is fully evaporated. It's been a few hours and it's getting drier. I, what I'm doing next is I cut it into these little pizza pie individual pieces that I'm gonna stick on here to help dry out from the bottom and such a bit easier. Last thing I'm doing, once these are dry, it's getting re-blended into a powder. And this is our final product. It's a little bit over a 50-50 blend. As you can see, we ended up with a total of 53.9 grams, and we only started with 23.8 grams of just the mushroom powder. And I redid this with a corrected 50-50 blend, except I kind of messed up. I, I got ahead of myself and placed it in before I added the water, but it turned out it wasn't a big deal. You just evaporate the rest of the water out. It still turned out fine. And that one, I only had to evaporate it for two hours instead of the six. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is my process of how to do a hot water extraction of oyster mushrooms. And this should get you the most bioavailable polysaccharides, and in this case, the pleurans, out of your oyster mushrooms. My favorite ways to consume it as it is right now is to add it to foods. I've added it to yogurt. You can add it to tea, except it's a little bit, you know, gradular, granular. I don't know the right word. It's a little bit gritty inside tea still. The flaxseed and stuff, you can kind of chow down on it a little bit. I don't like how that sounded either. You can't fully dissolve all the flaxseed and such in the liquid, so it's a little bit gritty as you're drinking it as well, but you won't choke on it. That's basically it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna have more coming out. These types of videos are a little time consuming, but I'm still trying to get one more mushroom grow in before the end of the year. And I'll leave up my playlist of all fungi related videos. Hope you come back, consider subscribing, give it a like if it's informational to you. I don't know. I was on a roll. It started sounding good. Stay fun. I'll catch you next time.